What's up, everybody? It's your boy Mars Man here, and I'm joined with the Mars Recruit to give you the breakdown of the top most anticipated games of October. And in this video, we're going to break down the games that we are excited for, as well as games from smaller developers that we are intrigued by. And we are going to give our opinions on why we're excited about them and why you should go check them out. So let's first talk about the list of games that we kind of have a outlook for. And granted, this list is not every single game that's dropping for October, but at least we're going to give you kind of the key ones in our eyes that you should be looking on, whether maybe purchasing or trying out at some point. So the first game we'll talk about Warhammer, uh, was it 40,000 Dark Tide? <laughs> it's coming out for the Xbox Series X and S, and it's going to be uh, it's coming out on uh, October 4th. Assassin's Creed Mirage is going on basically all consoles and PC October 5th. Detective Pikachu Returns, a big, big game that's coming back, is uh, the sequel is coming on the Switch on October 6th. Forza Motorsport, another game a lot of people are excited about, Xbox Series X and S and PC on October 10th. Lords of the Fallen is going on all the next-gen consoles on October 13th. Sonic Superstars is going to be on all consoles October 17th. Marvel Spider-Man 2 is a major game a lot of people are talking about and are excited about coming on the PlayStation 5 only on October 20th. No information yet on any sort of PC port down the line yet. We have we have to see about that. Well, I'll talk more about that later on. Uh, we also have Super Mario Bros. Wonder, which is coming on the Switch on October 20th as well, same day. Metal Gear Solid Master Collection Volume 1 is going on all consoles. That's a that's a great, great series of games, October 24th. The Lord of the Rings Return to, to Moria. PlayStation 5 and PC on October 24th, and Alan Wake 2 is dropping on the next-gen consoles on October 27th. And when it comes to the smaller developers, we also want to give a shout-out to some of these games. Some of them are, are kind of really... Out, they're in the shadows. They're not really talked about, while some of them are actually really hyped. So we have uh, we have the Lamplighters League. It's coming on the PC, Xbox Series X, and S, and that is uh, on the October 3rd. Battle Shapers on PC is in early access on October 3rd. Wizard with a Gun is got jumping on the next-gen consoles on October 17th. City Skylines 2 is dropping on the next-gen consoles. I know there was a kind of a delay that they originally yeah. or you know, had pushed PC's it into. Coming out this month, yeah, uh, PC, PC is coming out earlier this month. Yeah, so that's coming on October 24th. Dave the Diver, a very anticipated uh, smaller developer game is coming on the switch board is dropping october 26th and war hospital is dropping on next gen consoles october 26th and so with that being said let's jump into some of the games that we are the most probably most excited for or that we feel are going to be the most anticipated and the first one i'm going to talk about i think is on everyone's mind i'm dropping my playstation shirt today to kind of rep, rep uh, kind of represent is spider-man 2 and obviously when you think about this game it, it is a obviously another sequel to one of the most probably the most famous and most liked superheroes of all other maybe other than batman if you think about the most famous marvel or yeah marvel character spider-man is probably the most loved so you have a great game from spider-man and also miles Morales, miles Morales, which was an expansion that did very well it's dropping on the playstation 5 only on next gen and there's no word on a pc port yet generally what we've seen with like with, i know jim ryan is is retiring but uh, one of the things he said was in, in their original plan was to have probably roughly a six to eight month window in between the original launch on the PlayStation 5 and possibly porting to the PC if they decide to do so. It's not for every single game, but uh, my my inkling is telling me, a year. Probably yeah, a year. I think closer close to that year, I think probably a minimum eight months because I think they want to let it kind of simmer on the PlayStation 5. And this is going to be that $69.99 price tag. Now, Obviously, you have to you have to see that the fandom of Spider-Man is going to elevate this even more. I mean, obviously, they did a great job with the previous games already. And the fact that this was an open world game that people have always wanted for Spider-Man to have, it kind of reminds you of those classic PS2 games back in the day. But they have been extremely fun to play. Miles Morales and, and playing as Miles Morales and Peter Parker in this game is going to be phenomenal. Being able to switch between both characters each have their own powers each have their own backstories along with it and th it's like the fact that you get to do this seamlessly i mean it obviously works along with the playstation 5 and the ability that it has with its really fast ssds um but on top of that it's like it's actually a function that i've seen in many games before i mean a lot of people say like this is brand new like i've seen it happen in like kingdom hearts dream drop distance like uh i've seen this in other titles that allows you to switch between major characters which i, which I always like 
because it kind of gives you differing perspectives on, on whatever event that's happening. But I feel like this game is going to hit really well because the story of it is foreshadowing exactly what everyone knows is probably going to happen. Obviously, Peter Parker is 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 controlled by the symbiote, and uh, we all know that in the in this comics and the movies, you know the, the foreshadowing is that you know Peter Parker is going to start doing some crazy uh, crazy ass stuff, and you know Miles Morales is going to have to be the voice of reason and be like, hey, dude, chill the hell out. And then once once he takes off the symbiote. That's when you know Venom shows up, and there's obviously trailers and already screenshots confirming that Venom will be a character in the game, a villain in the game. But it's not just going to be Venom, and obviously, I think Venom is probably the most popular, uh, you know, antagonist in Spider-Man, which is why people are so always so excited to have him in any sort of cinema or game. But you're getting other characters that have never really been discussed or shown before, like Kraven the Hunter, who is very interesting in his own right, and I think a lot of people are excited to see what he does. Um, and obviously, uh, I always the name for name passed me, but like Lizard Man, yeah, they have like the doc, like the professor that works alongside Peter Parker when he was in college, um, learning and, and kind of the story behind that is also very interesting too. Um, basically, trying to like heal his own wounds and, and develop like kind of like a cure, um, and he kind of gets sick by that stuff. But all that, all those classic Spider-Man characters are honestly just great. I mean they're always synonymous with being good storytelling with that so other than just the characters it's just the world is bigger they made new york city a lot more expansive now obviously people are going to be just extremely excited to go and play that and the, when ke- people have been went to go preview the game they said this is going to hit really well and i could tell i could have told you it was going to hit well i mean spider-man is a, is a great ip i mean yeah. they, they, it did so well previously you know, I, I, I have no doubt that it was going to be a success. I just want to see how much of a success is going to be, especially comparing itself to this era of gaming that happened in this year of 2023. Like seeing how it compares to like Baldur's Gate and Legends of the Tears of the Kingdom. Where does it land? Is it closer to like Final Fantasy and Starfield or is it in the higher tiers with some of the other games that we just mentioned? So like that's that's going to be where the question is going to be. So I mean, Spider-Man 2 is going to be one of my most anticipated and the other one I wanted to talk about really briefly is Assassin's Creed Mirage. I mean, I I don't want to spend a lot of time on this one because Assassin's Creed to me, I feel like it's in a love-hate relationship with Assassin's Creed. I used to love playing the games back in the day. Big history fan. I always enjoyed the atmosphere in the world, but recently they've been kind of punching me right in the groin. They have not really been meeting any of the promises that they made. And this game is gonna actually dropping it actually at a price decrease compared to other games. $49.99 for a standard edition and $59.99 for the deluxe edition. So not even the standard $70 price tag for the base baseline. But what they're trying to do here is mirror the original Assassin's Creed games going in that golden age of Baghdad, more narrative driven story, not an open world story, which honestly might be better because if you look at Assassin's Creed Odyssey or Valhalla, they were both basically just felt dead they did not feel like exciting because it was just open world open world and it was just too much stuff going on that didn't really feel appealing so i'm excited for spider-man 2 i'm hoping assassin's creed mirage will bring it back to its old state um so i i'm excited for those games but uh hockey was a game that you were most excited for for this month of october so i picked forza and if you guys remember it was shown to us at the xbox showcase and it looked real good when they showed it and I've always been a fan of uh, cars in real life and, and games as well. And it started with Need for Speed, Hot Pursuit 2. You know, me and my brother used to race uh, with that game all the time. It was very fun. Uh, then, it, you know, I, I got into realistic games. And I think it was uh, 2005 through 2017, uh, you know, Forza had had uh, pretty much racing simulations. Now, they came out every other year, which I think, you know, Call of Duty should uh, take some notes from that. They said they were going to do it, but then they went back on their word immediately. But, um, you know, it's been a, a pretty much a staple for, for racing sims pretty much since. And we haven't seen one uh, in five years. So uh, they've added a lot. I'm not going to go into all of it, but uh, they did add uh, 100 new cars uh, for a total of 500 cars. They got 20 locations, uh, five new locations, but all the locations have actually been uh, rebuilt from the ground up, which is awesome. And over 800 upgrades in total. So you're gonna have a lot of, uh, you know, variabilities and just a lot of, uh, you know, things to do uh, when you're gonna be upgrading your car and, and racing. This is a pretty much a straight up racing sim. Uh, 
me and Mars had played the multiplayer for uh, Horizon, and it was very fun. That was an open world game. This is going to be um, a multiplayer where you can actually join uh, practice races. There's actually going to be uh, racing leagues as well, so it's going to get sweaty out there. Uh, make sure you you got your helmet on and everything, <laughs> and you're ready to go. So this is going to be a fun game, and, and I just can't wait to play it. Yeah, man, I'm excited for it too because racing games, I feel like I've become more accustomed after playing Forza Horizon. I feel like I feel, I feel like I, I can pick up motorsport and enjoy it, especially after I enjoyed Horizon so much. But Angelica, so what? Yeah, I do. I was lucky with getting <laughs> again so many different cars, man. I, it, that was pretty insane. But Angelica, what is the game you are most in, anticipated for? What are you that you're excited for for this month? Yeah, and just like other months, I'm going to give kind of a bullet quick, uh, kind of quick previews of a couple of the other giant titles you mentioned at the start. First one is Lords of the Fallen going out for PC, PS5, Xbox X, and Series S on October 13th. And this is for all those Souls-like fans out there, like the three of us here. This is another one that enters that ring, a dark fantasy action RPG where you're overthrowing a demon god. And again, what I like is all these new souls like have their own identity. They kind of create a new one, the most recent one being Lies of P. But for this one, when you die in this game, you usually get a game over, game over, but not in this game. You get sent to the death world, or again, the land of the dead, excuse me. And it actually changes the landscape and the enemies that you face. And there, throughout the game, you're going to have to go in between the land of the living and land of the dead. And this is a... Uh, around a 30 hour game. So it's not one of those giant 100 plus hours that we've been experiencing all of 2023. So a shorter game. But what I really like too is you can also summon friends. It kind of reminds me of Dark Souls with that hint of that Elden Ring summoning friends to do levels and fight bosses with you, expansive bosses and stuff like that. So that was a something that really drove my eye. And it's also $59.99 on Steam and $69.99 on console. Um, Super Mario Bros. Wonder, we know about this. We're big uh, Nintendo fans as well. This is that platformer, side-scrolling, uh, famous game, and like we've seen in the past, but with kind of that trippy uh, environment theme to it, where you have this wonder power, and it kind of makes it feel like you're on drugs with all the different, uh, you know, it changes the landscape of the level, it changes kind of your powers. So a lot of interesting stuff there. I am a little bit upset about Yoshi. Yoshi's kind of an OP character for people trying to, you know, have a calm experience, so he can't get hit. All he can do is fall off a cliff. Yoshi's one of my favorite characters, so they made him an OP one for accessibility. I wish that wasn't the case, so now i got to be someone a little bit harder. And finally, Alan Wake 2 from the PS5, Xbox Series, SNS, and the PC. Oh, before I continue, uh, Super Mario's Wonder is on, uh, coming out October 20th. But Alan Wake 2 is coming out the 27th, and this is a thriller horror-style game. And this is a sequel to Alan Wake. I don't want to spoil things that happened in the previous game. But Alan Wake is trapped in the Nightmare Realm or Nightmare Prison, and you have two main protagonists in this one. So you're Sage Anderson, uh, an FBI agent, and obviously Alan Wake. You're going to be going in between the two, and it's kind of gave me like a Hellblade Resident Evil 2 vibe um, in this. So it's kind of a, a narrative-driven, uh, scarce resources, so you got to be smart with your decisions, smart with how you're attacking these kind of nightmare the, the problem I have, and not really I have, but I'm wondering is the audience, the two protagonists. We've seen this work at times in franchises, and other times it has caused a lot of controversy. You're not going to be Alan Wake the entire time. You have two protagonists now splitting between the two. Is that going to cause issues? Also, I heard throughout the previews is looking at objectives during the game is brutal. They do not give you much help. So you got to pay attention to this one. But those are the ones that I'm excited for most. Yeah, man, and, and with the obviously with the major titles, we have to talk about the smaller titles made by smaller developers. And we've always made it a point on this channel to to really give a shout out to the small developers out there that that put a lot of work into these games. It may not be recognized to the same degree, but also put out a a large amount of gems that people should definitely look into. And and so I'm gonna talk about one of my first gems that I really enjoyed. And this is our, or something I'm really looking forward to, and that's Wargroove 2. I mean, if you guys never heard of Wargroove, if, let's just say if you are a fan of an Advanced Wars, Wargroove is almost like the the spiritual successor of what Advanced Wars really was about. The fun of that strategy, turn-based gameplay that was about you trying to outsmart your opponent, kind of like in that 3D chess type of deal, where you're moving between different units, different commanders, and trying to outsmart your opponents 
And it's kind of like put into like a mystical world where instead of it being about like tanks and military officials like in Advanced Wars was, this is all about like a mystical beings like with like swords and can like you know things along those lines. And so Wargroove 2 did a great job. I mean, at least looks really good based on the new characters. They have a minimum of four new characters being added. They have an three separate campaigns that you can play. And it looks like they are also including a lot of new maps and different types of mini game modes to also work on. And obviously I'm excited for Wargroove 2 because of the fact that I was a big fan of the first title. And if they're only expanding upon that and giving us new characters, new new campaigns to play, I'm already going to be jumping into that. And the last one I'll talk really briefly on is War Hospital, $34.99 on Steam. It's going to be dropping on Steam, PS5, and Xbox. Basically, the whole premise is that you're building basically facilities to help keep your soldiers alive and, and healthy in the tail end of the War of 1812. And, uh, and, and basically, the whole kind of story changes based on how you keep the morale of the soldiers that have been injured and are casual. So it's kind of like a realistic game. It's very strategic and how you organize your facilities, but it kind of takes a toll based on how effective you are. So I feel like it's a very interesting game for sure. If you're into strategy games. I feel like this is definitely a month for, for strategy games. I mean, that's how I look at it at least. Uh, so Hockey, what is a, uh, a smaller title that you're interested in, in playing for this month? I got Battle Shapers and uh, looks like I'm gonna have to get a PC sooner rather than later. All these uh, indie games are pretty much all coming out on PCs. And, uh, you know, they're all catching my attention. So it comes from uh, Metric Empire. Um, and they tout it as a roguelite genre game, which I had to look up. Um, it kind of uh, uh, explains games that might have randomized levels or maybe some uh, permanent deaths as well. So this one's going to have uh, randomized levels. So it's going to have a lot of playability. Uh, so you can do multiple runs. The big thing for me was the art style. So uh, as soon as I checked out this game, it looked like Overwatch 1 to me, which uh, really got me excited because of how, you know, kind of negative my Overwatch 2 experience was. <laughs> this kind of got me a little hyped. And again, kind of got me on the side of buying a PC within the next uh, six months or so. Uh, but yeah, the, the cool thing too, your character is completely upgradable. Um, obviously the weapons, and the special abilities that your character um, possesses as well as upgradable as you know as long as you are attacking the um, <clears throat> the uh, machines as well as uh, the major boss fights as well so it's gonna be really cool and uh, I just wanted to get your guys opinion as well a lot of people were saying this was uh, Doom Eternal and Mega Man put together so I, I never played you know uh, some I never played both of those games so I mean yeah I can see the Doom Eternal say? Yeah, yeah. I can see the Doom Eternal look to it yeah, yeah. I, I thought it was interesting that, you know, some people were saying it that is, as well. And I, a, I never played those games, you know, so. Yeah, yeah uh, but Angelica, what is a, a smaller title that you're more excited to play for yeah, this Yeah, and maybe some of our listeners already know this, but Dave the Diver is getting its Switch port on October 26th. And for those that may say, hey, this game sounds familiar, it's because it came out in June this year on the PC to a critically acclaimed uh, scores, a 90 on Metacritic, 89 on Open Critic, And so for those console players, it comes to the Switch. I'm going to be very excited to, to see it come out and want to try it. This is a casual single-player adventure RPG. Um, it, it kind of entails multiple different aspects that people really enjoyed. Exploration, fishing, and you also have to maintain your sushi restaurant. So the things that you fit, you catch, you end up have to cook for your customers. So, you know, some of those interesting components, it's not a very highly intense game, but you use your harpoon, you use other weapons. So you do get multiple different things. You catch those fish, you complete quests. It's quirky, it's charming, and they say the narrative is very strong. So I'm excited to see it come out on console. This is a 20 to 25 hour game, and I think it's running at $19.99. So $20 for Dave the Diver on Switch. Sounds like a great deal. Are there any games that you're excited for the month of October? Let us know what you think in the comments below. If you like this type of content, make sure you hit that thumbs up and subscribe for more future content. Until next time, this is Mars Man signing off. Peace out, guys. <laughs>